All right, we have people coming in. Are we having a successful day today? Welcome everybody to a Friday, to a Friday session with RVP. I'm glad to have you guys here. If you guys are new here, I would always encourage you guys to show up, throw something in the uh, throw something in the chat. Let us know where you guys are from and uh, what you what your business's name is, stuff like that, because we want to help you guys. And we'd love to know who's here and who we can help. Just getting everything set up here. Where do we go? All right, we got some people pouring in. Good to see you guys. Justin, good to have you here. Joe. So like I said, if you guys are new, this is going to be an awesome session. We're talking about process mapping today, which sounds boring, but it's actually super cool because of what it can do for your business. I'm going to be doing a live demo today, so you guys can actually see how this works. And uh, it should be fun. All right. So jumping right into it. Are we on time? Yeah, we're on time. Okay, perfect. Jumping right into it. So welcome to another RVP learning experience. So the biggest thing uh, that I want you guys to think about is why you're here. Whenever you come to one of these uh, sessions, it's important to think, what are your intentions? Like you're coming to learn process mapping. Why would you come and learn process mapping and get in, get involved with something like that? You know, you're so busy thinking about sales and marketing and producing and collecting and signing, signing different agreements, right? Like your final insurance agreement or a lease agreement or buying another truck. Why is process mapping important? Well, if you're here, I'll tell you that one of the, the, there's four corners that you should be walking as a CEO in your business. It's leadership development, business development, systems and processes, and innovative campaigns. Those are the four corners that you walk as a CEO. Everything else is technically someone else's job. You're just doing it because you don't have someone there yet. Why don't you have someone there yet? Because it's better to do it yourself than because you could do it better than someone else. Why? Because you haven't documented your processes. So process documentation is the most important thing that you're gonna walk away with in the three to $8 million break point. It's not <clears throat> learning how to sell decks and fences on top of the roofing that you're selling. If you wanna grow your business through the three to $8 million, pro three to $8 million um, break point, you have to figure out who's gonna help. And the byproduct of getting people who help you is that they know the process as well as you do. So I want you guys to take 30 seconds and I'm going to just keep things quiet for 30 seconds. Then we'll introduce our panelists um, and everything like that. But I want you to take 30 seconds of awkward silence and just think, why are you coming here? What is your intention for your business's growth this year? Think about that for 30 seconds of awkward silence. Because your intention is huge. And then turn off your phone. Make sure you stop the distractions. Close your social media. And just be here with me in the room. Because I'm telling you, this session is the most important thing that you're going to do in the three to eight million dollar break point. And it doesn't stop after that. But this is one of the most important things. And if you don't, if you're above eight million and you don't have this, you are feeling the effects of it every day. Trust me, that 30 seconds is as hard for me as it is for you. It's like giving a lick into your kid. I don't, wouldn't know because my kid's only uh, five days old and I have not given him any lickings yet. Um, just in case Child Protective Services is in the room, I figured it was worth clarifying. Um, but I'm happy to have you guys here. So thank you very much. So I want to introduce, I want to introduce our panelists. So I'll, uh, you have me here, but I want to introduce Bettina. So Bettina, if you could just explain a little bit about who you are and why you are here. Of course. Hey guys, um, my name is Bettina. Uh, I've been at RBP for about a year. Uh, I started off as a canvasser here in Charleston, South Carolina. I used to work for Roofing USA. Uh, and then I became a project manager in outside sales uh, when Adam Sand and Allison came to consult for a roofing business partner. And now uh, I've been working with them. Uh, I started working uh, as a size implementation manager with the Sumaco department. And then I move on uh, as RevOps strategist. And now I'm in the marketing ops department. 
Uh, so this, uh, I'm really, really, I myself, I'm really excited about this course because I don't understand a lot about BPMN 2.0, so I can uh, learn a lot from this course. So I'm going to learn just like you guys. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. We also, uh, we also have Andy in the room. If there's anybody else from RBP not in the room, I apologize. We'll make sure you get you on spotlight on the next one. But Andy, if you want to go explain who you are, why you're here. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Um, I'm Andy. Uh, I've been in the roofing industry for about five years. I worked at Roofer for three. I worked at Job Progress and Leap. I also worked at Moment on the financing side. So I have a good footprint on the technology side, and I'm here to answer your questions uh, or field them to Adam. Perfect. Thank you so much. So yeah, the um, everybody here is is in here in the chat to help you guys engage. To help you guys, uh, you know, understand if there, if if I'm missing something, if I'm going too fast, because this is a complicated topic, they're there to make sure you get answers to your questions. So don't be afraid to reach out in the chat. There's a Q and A button. The Q and A button is a really handy way to make sure your conversation doesn't get missed, because sometimes the chat fires up, and then all of a sudden your question might get buried. But the Q and A button is a great way to do that. And so look along the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see a thing that says Q&A, looks like two little chat bubbles. But without further ado, we'll jump into why you guys came here and what you guys wanna learn. So um, there's always a chance that somebody in the room does not know who I am, I'm not that famous. So uh, my name is Adam Sand, I'm the CEO of RBP, Roofing Business Partner. Uh, I am essentially wanting you to be here to not have another year of almost. A lot of people almost hit their goals every year, and it's because you don't know what you don't know. And I want to help you start to know those things. Now, as far as who I am, why why you should listen to me. Okay. The, the, a lot of times people in the advice space, in the guru space, you know, they can have the same advice. You can give the same advice as Warren Buffett. You know, like he can, you can read Warren Buffett's blog and memorize every word and give the advice. But the problem is if you forget to build Berkshire Hathaway first, we don't get that much influence. So for those of you who might not know who I am, and be wondering, why should I listen to this guy? I spent two years on the road traveling from roofing company to roofing company, consulting and helping them grow. And previously, we only served essentially uh, companies that were kind of in the top 200 income range. You know, 15 million and up was like our, our bread and butter. We went out of it. But the the whole idea was we, want, we wanted to serve customers with a very VIP high-end experience and build their companies. And so now we have about $850 million worth of re revenue running on our systems. Our goal is to get to 10 billion in 10 years. I did it this way because I, I looked at like the gold rush and I saw what was out there in the market. In fact, that's how Andy came to work here is because a lot of people in the roofing industry are selling tools. You know, back in the in the gold rush, it wasn't the people that were mining for gold that got rich, right? They were out there working their asses off. They were doing the job. But the people who got rich were the people who are comfortable in town selling the tools. And I couldn't quite, you know, lay my head on the pillow with that. I chose that I wanted to sell the tools and then also go climb the mountain, help people mine for gold. I wanted to go out there and actually work with companies. So I'd go and spend a month on site and build these incredibly intimate relationships and support them consistently to help them grow. And eventually we recruited a bunch of people and have a really good team. We built a system that is RBP. And now we help roofing companies grow consistently in more income ranges than just the top 200. So that's why we're here is to do a one-to-many approach where I give you the best practices that I've been giving previously only to the country club of roofing companies. And I'm trying to bring this knowledge to everyone so we can level up the industry overall. And of course I can stay home and be with my kids. So I can be um, benefiting from not traveling. Now, as for this particular course, I like to always introduce the bluff, the bottom line up front. Why does process documentation matter? Well, you're gonna to learn to increase clarity and alignment in your teams. Right. Every time I feel that we don't have alignment, it's because I have not yet documented the process. It's something that does not stop. Um, it continuously goes in your business. And because adoption is everything, if this is just a tool. Right. Learning how to document your processes, you're going to use a tool like Lucidchart. But then you have a process for doing it. And we're going to make sure you walk away with the process of how to do it. Then you want to make sure you get adoption. You want to actually do it. None of it matters if you just learn how to do it. The difference between knowing and doing is the reason we're not all billionaires with perfect abs. You're going to have to do this. All right. Then the byproduct of it will be enhanced learning and improvement in your business's metrics because people will know what they're supposed to be doing. On top of that, you're going to reduce errors and risk to the business. Because remember, RBP's consulting methodology. Remove constraints. Then 
find a way to get more customers, make them worth more, and de-risk the business from this happening in perpetuity forever. So we want to get a clear set of controls and variables so we can test against them in our business. So process creation is constant, and this is why it's important. So we got to learn, in today's course, we're going to learn how to break down a process into a meaningful guide so people can understand their job roles and you can understand the flow of business. So we can systemize your business, free up your time, free up your time and train people quickly so you can scale your company. Now, I pulled a couple of examples of what is not a process map. So this is some uh, this is something I saw on Facebook the other day. This was what a guy said when somebody said, hey, what's the process for retail? And this is what this guy does in his company. This is not a process map. This is coloring. OK, um, these are from some good friends of mine and they're actually great red business people. But this, too, is not a process map. It's actually very confusing. And then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. Like, why is it one, two, three, four, five? And then it starts back here, but then here it goes like that. Like this is not a good flow because I would either read it like this, left to right, top to bottom, or I would read it like this, but not both. And so this creates confusion. Confusion always leads to failure. And so if you want to document a process, you want to learn how can you be the most effective and efficient at documenting your processes? Well, it helps if you have a rubric because you'll notice that these two, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. We wanna give you something that's duplicatable that every time someone goes to read a process map, they're reading it in the same language. And that language is called business process model notation. So BPMN. And there's some key elements to this. Now, put a one in the chat if you've heard BPMN before so I can see if anybody's heard. I'm assuming 90% haven't, but let me know if you've heard of business process model notation in the chat. So I know whether to slow down or speed up. Because if you haven't heard about it, I'm going to make sure you guys walk out of here understanding it. And if you guys understand it, then you can and, and then you can approach these problems through. We need to get this process mapped. And this is not hard to do. Like you do not need to be an engineer to do this. You just have to break it down into core elements, which I'm going to do for you today. So put something in the chat. Let me know if you've done this before. I got three responses. So I got more than three people in here. So let me know. Engage in the chat. Let me know. You heard of this before. Yes or no? Okay, one person has, Ashley, awesome, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, good, I'm getting an overall number of notes. So perfect, I'm gonna make sure that I explain this like I was explaining it to a Cocker Spaniel. So that way, whoops, that way you guys will walk out of here knowing how to do it. Thank you very much for your engagement, guys. I appreciate it a ton, because otherwise it feels like I'm talking in my living room to an empty room, so it helps. So one of the first elements, okay, of a good business process model notation is a pool. A pool is, is a grouping of people, right, or functions or users or roles or responsibilities. It's, a, it's essentially a group that says this, this is going to contain um, all the actions for this particular flow. <clears throat> and then you put swim lanes in it. So you could have roofing company X. Right? You could have another one, another pool that is customer, but it's essentially a group of actors in a system. And so then in here, roofing company X, for this example, we have uh, our sales manager and our production manager. And being that we have this here built, what we know is that we're going to have tasks that go back and forth between these two people. Then we're also going to have tasks and gateways. Tasks and gateways define what goes inside your swim lanes. So the first thing you're going to set up is your swim lanes. And then you're going to start working through your tasks. A task is the most basic level of an activity. It cannot be broken down any further. So you don't want to say, like when we look at some of these other examples, it'll say create estimate. That is typically a lot of things, a lot of tasks inside of one task. So a task should, you should try and break it down to the, the most basic level so it cannot be broken down further. Then you have a gateway and a gateway is a decision. So it's a state of the business where based on some condition, it could break the flow into more paths, usually mutually exclusive paths, meaning like yes or no, it can only go down one. When you get into advanced, you can have multiple pathways based on a gateway, but in in starter, like on the beginner course, we're talking mutually exclusive. 
So for example, you would have a task, which is review the job file, at which point you're going to have a gateway. Do we have all the correct information? So is the information correct on the job file? If yes, proceed. If no, go somewhere else. So we could then break it down to another task which is to send this back to the sales rep or send it to production. How am I doing so far? Anybody here feel overwhelmingly confused? Because so, again, this seems simple, but if we always do it the same way, and I'm gonna do a live demonstration of this for you guys to see, because it doesn't take that long, right? If we do this, then it will make sense when it's done. We're really trying to define the difference between human actions and workflows. Because as your business starts to starts to grow, you're going to have things that happen in your system that are the result of automation. That's the dream state. If we have automation, we need to know when that stuff happens. Because if a new employee jumps into the system and they don't know why something happened automatically or when it happens, it's kind of like there's a magician in the back pulling on a bunch of strings and, and you, you don't really understand what's going on. So you want to make sure that you can define human manual... Oh, human manual activities, right? So that is signified by a little hand. And again, this is oversimplified designed in Canva. This is very easy to do. And we're gonna give you a link to a software um, if you want to do this kind of stuff yourself. Um, but it's very easy to do in the, in the software so you can make these little things show up. The other thing is automations, right? So when we create a new deal, so when the sales rep clicks the button, create new deal, there's an automation signified by this little gear that says that a new project will be created in company cam. So now we know what makes the company cam. So when we get further in the, you know, in the CRM, we go, well, there we go. Bettina posted in the chat. If you guys want to sign up for lucid chart, I got a special discount link there that I pulled from the software this morning now, and there'll be a QR code to get it at the end as well. So you don't have to worry about going and signing up for that now or losing it. It'll be available at the end. Now, if this new project exists in company cam, that helps us know when that happened. Now, in this case, if you were just doing this without swim lanes, so I want to talk for a reason why this is important to have these swim lanes. Because sure, this defines what the business does, right? We review the job file. We determine does it have all the right correct information. We send it to production and then we review the files again. But the minute we add the swim lane back in, it now starts to make sense that this now went somewhere to someone and they do this. So another thing that is a big part of process documentation is under understanding the difference between a process and a sub process where you might need to identify a group of tasks that can be that can be accessed multiple times, such as calling, making notes, right? There are multiple places in a process where you might call and make notes. There might be multiple places where you set a task. There might be multiple places where you have to assign something, right? So you might perform a sub-process several times. So sub-processes can exist and be identified with BPMN. And they would look something like this. So you could group this set of tasks into a sub-process and move them, you could put this outside of that swim lane and you could define this as a sub process. And then you could have one task inside the swim lane. So this is the job file review sub process. So if we go back a few pages, we got review the job file. Well, again, that's not broken down into its individual steps. So we can link this out to a sub process so that you could have a very simple diagram here but then you can put this somewhere else, right? So that you can see what this sub process looks like. And that way you can keep your lucid chart clean, but at the same time, make it easy. So let me know in the chat, how is that working for you guys? Do you guys understand what questions do you have? Cause I got to take a second to, uh, to load up my demo for you guys. So I would love to hear where you guys are at as far as questions go. So I can uh, get those loaded up at the end because there's what you know now and there's what you're going to know in 10 minutes. And so I need to make sure that we're capturing that in this moment. This like what you know now stuff. So while I'm loading up this demo, because I got all these wacky screens everywhere. 
let me know what your guys' thoughts are because we're going to do a live one here. Okay. Oh, Bettina, I think you sent the wrong link, maybe. No, it doesn't. Yeah, you sent the wrong link. It doesn't matter. I'll have the core the QR code at the end will have the link. So we're good either way. All right, let me know if you guys can see a screen that says blank diagram on it. Because we are going to do our live demo example here. All right, you guys see it? All right. Hey, everybody. We're going to document a process that has nothing to do with roofing to get started. All right. So we want to do something that has nothing to do with roofing, so it's not confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an ice cream shop. Try to make this window a little bit bigger. So we're going to do what happens in an ice cream shop because everybody kind of has a rough idea as to what happens when you go buy an ice cream. And so we'll kind of dive in. So first thing I'm doing is I'm setting up my swim lane for my customer. So the great thing about Lucidchart is that you can go right here and it's got BPMN 2.0. You've got the shapes built right in. So the shapes exist. And then if you want to add a swim lane, or a pool. I got another pool right here. Okay, and I'm going to type in here Baskin. Holy crap, I can't type today. Robbins. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, one of the actors in the system is going to be an ice cream artist. And we're going to have another one. I'm doing this one because it's super simple because everyone's been to an ice cream store and I don't want you guys to, if I do a roofing example, everybody's going to start thinking, well, I don't do it that way. Well, what? Are, why do they do it? I don't want you guys to think about roofing right now. I want you to think about BPMA. So that's why I made the decision to do this about something that's kind of outside of the roofing example, because this is how I was taught. I was taught with stuff that were weird examples. Now you can make your swim lanes nice and wide. So I'm going to drag this one out. So that it's nice and wide here. Now, how do we define our process? So what's the first thing that happens in our, I want to buy an ice cream cone process? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is a customer has to walk into the store, right? So actually one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'll show you why, because I know that I'm going to need more space. You can do this on the fly. I'm just doing it because I'm thinking ahead. And I want to save you guys some hassle of trying to watch me. All right. So now first thing we want to do is we have a customer enter the store. That's the first thing that happens. So you just go enter store. So that's the first thing that this customer does is they walk in. And now naturally what they're going to do next is they're going to review the menu, right? You're going to look around, look at the menu. So I just drag that little arrow out to the side. I click that box and a task shows up. It's very easy to do. And so they're going to review the menu. It's the first thing that someone's going to do. Now, this would be a manual task, right? And that this is something they're going to do. Now, we don't necessarily have to do it. And there's more icons here. And I know that I'm opening this up to some new thoughts. But we'll say it's a manual task. They're going to review the menu. So that doesn't require anybody from here to walk the menu out to them, to ask them what they want to order. They're going to then choose to order. So I'm going to drag another one out and we're going to put a gateway in. So remember, a gateway is a way to define a point where the business is going to have to change what it does. And so if the customer wants to order something, we can go yes or no. So I'm going to have another line that comes out here and then they're going to have to order ice cream. So say what they want to order, okay? So they're going to find what they want to do. And that's only if they choose to order, yes. But they may choose to not order anything. And this is where we define an endpoint. An endpoint is the same thing as the other circle, the starting circle, but it's the endpoint 
where they just decide that they don't, so they don't like anything in the store, so they're gonna leave the store. And I'll drag this over here and I'll define this as a no. So order question mark, yes or no. So this is where they say what they wanna order. This is the point where now suddenly the business is gonna interact with another actor, right? So you have your swim lanes, right? And then you have your, your, your pools and your actors. So now this is where they're gonna tell the sandwich artist what they want. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna say we wanna we want to have, give them an order. So we're gonna do another starting circle. We're gonna order received. Now, there's a way to make these words appear in a different spot so they're not overlapped. I won't bother with making this pretty, but there's a key thing here to understand who the sender and who the receiver is. So the way we do that is black is for send, okay? And the, and the white is for received. So this says we sent this and it's received here. So they essentially, they've they said what they wanna order. Now, one of the first, this is where we start getting into some more fun stuff. So we got this understanding. We got our swim lanes, we got our pools, circle means start, task, gateway, yes or no, end point, sending a message through a task, and that becomes a starting point for someone else. So now at this starting point, the first task that this person is gonna do is what? What is your guess? What is the first thing the person's gonna do when they receive an order? Help me out in the comments. Let me know I'm not putting you to sleep. I know it's Friday morning. Help me out here. What is the first thing that a person in an ice cream shop should probably do when someone says that they wanna order some Rocky Road? Grab a cone, okay. So this is where the employee could make a mistake. How many scoops? Good, good, good. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gosh, teaching process documentation is so scary because it is boring unless we can make it fun. So yes, ask if they want to upgrade. Make sure they have Rocky Ray. Yes, Jay Coffer, you got the answer. All right. Yes, first thing we want to do is check if the ingredients are available. Everybody else had good answers, but this is the first they should do and see, do we have this available? Because they never have Rocky Road. It's always out. How about those people who ask, ask to list off all 26 ingredients and then order vanilla? Those people deserve to lose 200 points off their credit score. I'm just saying it. I said it. All right. So what happens? What happens if the ingredients are not available? Oh, crap. I screwed this up. Um, available. So we have to have an option. For if they're available so what does that mean we need next a gateway right all right so let's make a gateway available and if no so what one thing we can do to make this it's called a mutually exclusive gateway so there's more stuff you can do in here now this is when you want to get fancy remember we build like we used to build 100 200 dollars crms so the biggest one we're building right now is 300 grand so these things become like wiring diagrams. I'm gonna show you guys some examples later, just so you guys can be like, ooh, ah. But uh, you know, the, it, there's some stuff that you can do in here. Now, when we go back here, what do they have to do? Well, if it's no, actually first I should say, yeah, if first thing they have to do is inform the customer actually. So, so um, we're gonna say inform customer, not available. And that is going to be a message send task. And shit, I didn't mean to do that. I clicked too fast. I'm going to drag this out. And guess what? You're going to have to review the menu again, pal. So now they're going to have to review the menu again. And now this process starts over again. And see how this can be beautiful in its design. And it can make it so easy. Um, and so this, this makes it fun, right? Now, what, we're, what are we going to do next, right? Well, now we have to make... The ice cream so we have to we have, we have to like now we, we the ingredients are available yes so now we're gonna have task of making the ice cream yes okay and this was no so we're gonna have to make ice cream now this is a manual activity but is all there's probably more to making the ice cream than just that. So what we could end up doing is linking this out to a sub process. So we can make a sub process down here. 
an event sub process. We can put this down here and I can click this little button right here and move that to the top. And go make ice cream. And then in here, we can put more shapes that would be like grab cone. Oh. And then grab a scoop. And so then this is essentially how we would define the sub process. And then we could say, make the ice cream sub process. And so now we know that that is an event sub process that we would have linked out somewhere else. And you can actually use this little thing right here to then link out. You can actually make this clickable and then you can link out to another spot on this document. So it's really handy to have that. I'm gonna get rid of that for now. All right, so we have to make the ice cream. now. There's still another actor here, the cashier. So we're going to get them involved, right? So once we've made the ice cream, we followed the sub process. Now we're going to give the ice cream back to the customer. That's going to go back to getting our customer back involved with another task. Now, the hard thing is, is the customer, we didn't really define what they're going to do in the meantime. So let's define what they're going to do. So the first thing they're going to do is we're going to set up another circle task. It's an intermediate task. So that means we go from the little starter task, which is a one line. Intermediate task is two lines. And then the end task is the bold line. So this is an intermediate. So that means it's in the middle, right? So it's an intermediate task. And this is just a timer, right? Which means they're just going to wait. They're going to wait for their ice cream. Wait for ice cream. And then we're going to have another starter task. And we can link these two little arrows together. I just got to go like this. And it'll just, it'll just click on to that thing there. And we try and keep these nice and clean. If we can. There we go. And so now this is another event for them to start with. And now they're going to receive ice cream. There we go. All right, and at this point, now they have to go pay for this ice cream. So the next thing the human's gonna do is give their credit card. Now, I know we could talk about forms of payment, but I don't wanna drag this on too long. I think you guys are starting to grasp it, okay? But they're gonna give their credit card, that's a manual task. And now, we're going to come up here and we're going to go to this next pool. So remember pool, okay? We have this third, oh, whoop. So we have our cashier pool, right? So I want to zoom in on this one. And now we're going to have it, this is going to be their starting event, right? So their single line event, because this is where they receive the credit card. And now we're going to go um, credit card received. So now they start their process. Okay. And now we're going to start a group. Okay. So sometimes it's nice to label things by group. There's a lot of reasons for this. Okay. I'm going to do it at the end, but I just want to show you that we're going to put a group in. All right. So first, their, their job is to confirm the order, right? So now they say, did you find everything okay? Right. Did you get everything you're looking for? Something like that. So confirm order. Then another task, run credit card in terminal. Give credit card back. Credit card terminal, give credit card back. Then maybe want receipt. Maybe we'll have that, right? Want receipt. Okay. And this would actually be interesting because 
I'm just gonna extend these out a little bit. So do they want a receipt? In both cases, they're gonna end up going to the same place. I think of how I'd visualize this. Let's just get them out here, yes. Actually, it would be more like this, wouldn't it? Sorry, I'm figuring this out as I go, guys. Then, both would go here. We just want to ask yes or no. But otherwise, both cases are going to give the credit card back. It's just going to be with or without the receipt. And then they're now done, right? So their transaction is complete. And then this thing was I said was going to be a group. So we'll put this here. And we'll call this. financial transaction. So you can make this easy to find by labeling as a financial transaction. We could even put a little color to it. And then we could arrange it by sending it, send it back. So now when we're zoomed way out, we can say, hey, where do I get my money? Actually broke the cardinal rule. Anytime we get, we're looking to get money, I always make it green. Where's my money? Where's my green? So then now when we're looking at this, we go, oh, that's where we get, that's where we get our money. It's right here. And so that just makes it easier to find that kind of thing. But now we've got to give this person back their credit card. So let's go back here. So again, um, receives credit card. And then again, they're going to wait for their transaction. And in here, this timer, I'm going to call this wait for approval. And then this is a great example for where we would have a sub process. We would probably put something in here that says, Oh, whoops. It says approved. And if it was approved, yes. And if it was no, we could link out to an event sub process for this, saying, oh, this is the non approval process. Right now, in an ice cream shop, it's not that important, but if you're doing roofing and you're saying the claim does not get approved, well, how do you flip them to retail? That could be your non-approval process. So you receive your credit card back as a customer. Now you're gonna go eat your ice cream. And that is definitely a very manual task. And we'll extend this out just for the sake of being totally accurate. Oh. Leave the store and we're done. That's it. What'd that take? 10 minutes? How was that? All right. So that is our first demo of the day showing how to do a BPMN 2.0. So when we zoom out here, we have a very nice how to make an ice cream. So this is like how to run an ice cream, cream transaction. Okay. In here, we know. Okay, we know what the customer is going to do. We know the possible options of what could happen. We know what to do when the customer chooses not to order. We know what the ice cream is, the ice cream artist is supposed to do. We got everything flowing through. It's nice and easy to read. You could follow this. You could start working at the ice cream shop on the same day. And the only thing you would have to ask is what happens when we when the customer doesn't get the card approved. But for the most part, you could hire three people and they could learn to do this this day. And that took about ten minutes. 
And the more people in your company know how to speak this language, the better. So little midway check. Are you guys falling asleep? Are you guys finding this exciting? Do you guys want more information? Because I'm going to continue with the course, but I would love to see what you guys have for questions or we comments. Can. So Bettina, maybe jump in, help me out here. Let me kind of get, re get my screens reloaded and let me know if there's any comments that I should address. We have a, a question for Margaret um, and that uh, she asked if, how, how do you decide when it's too much detail versus not enough detail on your tasks? Cocker Spaniel test. You got to ask people if they would know what to do. Cause you're right. It's like, do you have to put lick ice cream, lick it again, lick it again, chew the cone. Don't swallow the cone before chewing, right? Like that would be a little too much detail. Um, so you have to think what would a reasonable person know? And so you usually kind of function from the, from the position of what these people were hired to do. So um, if they were hired to be a, I'll use our graphic design department. <clears throat> so before, when, when I put these slides together, right, I'll tell you that I'm not this creative. So when I put these slides together, it's a really great question. Um, I don't make them look pretty like this. Like that's not, that's not my forte. I'm just pulling up the screen again. When I do them, I don't I like I don't know how to make Canva look as good as it does. So we have a thing that we call RBPify. We RBPify the graphics. And so that's where uh, Shannon or someone on the graphics team here at RBP goes through and RBPifies the the graphics. So she makes them, she adds the little uh, the little space stuff and everything that you see in the background. So she makes all that look good. So on our process, we call it RBPify. Now I don't in that tell her to add a space rocket, add a little Saturn, you know, put the blue on the inside of the letters, right? She knows what to do in that case. Now that being said, if we were trying to scale up the graphic design department, we would then say, hey Shannon, what is your process for RBPifying our graph, our our, our my slides? Because when I get them. They look more like, when I do them, they look like this. They won't even have the little numbers, right? I'll literally just write something like that in there. And then she comes in and she adds this. I actually added this slide after the fact, and this was my attempt to add something that looked sort of like what Shannon does. So I put these colorful numbers here. But other, but if she did it, she probably would have made it look more like this. So then she would RBPify, she would put her, how I RBPify Adam's ugly slides and turn them into something that might be visually appealing to look at for an hour. Um, and that's where she comes in. So you, you, you will have multiple processes and you will have high level and then you'll have deeper dive and you'll go into some processes. It's something that will continuously evolve because your people will tell you when they keep making mistakes on something, it means that you have to go back and do a process on it or you're going to have to keep explaining it. It'll never be done. We're like the beacons of this. And we still have processes in RBP that are not yet documented. And you also learn. So another good example is, you know, in the case of our new um, platform program that we're doing, right? So I know I'm not sales pitching here. I'm just sharing with you what it's like to be on the other side of doing this. So we have this new pro program called RBP platform. And every, um, every one of those customers is coming in, they get this money back guarantee. So they say, we're going to grow you from 3 million to 8 million guaranteed in a year. We're going to put them on the HubSpot, we're going to do these monthly check-ins and these quarterly business reviews. I wrote out very detailed explanations of what the monthly check-in process is going to be, what they're going to do before that, what they're going to do after that. And I hand that off to a team and say, this is what we're going to do. And then they still have a bunch of questions. And then, if, and then now my team, so like Nick, Bettina, Anna, um, uh, Andy, right? They're going through and we're starting to break it down into pieces so that we can start to understand what's going to happen. And you know what we're finding? We find, we find all the time gaps where it's like, we just found one the other day. Um, oh, right. Like, what are we doing with roofers that are between zero to 2 million and three to 8 million? Because we have a program for roofers that are from three to eight. And we have a program for roofers that are from zero to two. And I was like, well, there's kind of a middle ground there, right? In the, in the, in the, in the two to three, what happens if a customer comes to us with 2.4 million in revenue? And we had to identify a, a gateway. And the gateway was, so what I what we defined 
was if the customer who's a 2.4 million revenue, if they've been earning $200,000 a year or a month, technically they're one bad month away from going back below 2 million. Like they could just recede fairly quickly. But if they were doing, you know, 90,000 a month in January, but in November, they're doing 450,000 a month. Well, technically from a run rate perspective, they're on track to do 5.5 million. So they should actually be buying platform. So that's a very good example of like, sometimes you don't get enough clarity and then you run into problems and you go back. The great thing about Lucidchart is that you can go back and edit them all the time and you can continue to make them, continue to get, make them better. So this is the spot where I'll, I'll help you guys get started with that. Um, so where to get started? First, you want to get Lucidchart. So um, Lucidchart is what we use at RBP. It's uh, it's a really, really, really great tool. Um, there's other tools like Miro and other things like that. Lucidchart is just the gold standard. So um, that's what we use. And to give you kind of the, the maybe the proof in the pudding, this isn't something that like I think is a good idea because we use it sometimes. I will show you guys um, what we this one. When I say we do processes, we do processes. Like we have tons and tons and tons of these things, right? So if I jump in here, um, let's try not to give any too much of anybody's stuff. Let's go. Well, this is just this is just my documents. Then there's the Teams folders. Here's our HubSpot standard builds. Like we have oodles and oodles and oodles. We document so many of these things. Change order workflows. Subcontractor and distributor workflows. One of our customers gives Hawaiian air miles to their customers. So every time they buy, they can get Hawaiian air miles. So we have to document that process, right? Then you can start to document the days that they're created and what version it is. Like you can get more advanced with it. Um, Google review nurture, right? So we built an automation that automates Google review requests. And then when people do a Google review request, um, if they if they leave a review, then it will uh, it'll adjust the life cycle stage inside HubSpot. And then it will also do an automatic response so it'll reply to a customer um so there's there's lots of lots and lots and lots like so when i say we use lucid chart i mean like we use lucid chart a lot so i really trust that so if you guys want to use it um then i would i would go to that link and download that it's pretty cheap so it's not very expensive i think it's like 20 i don't know we have a lot of users so I spend like a thousand bucks a month on it, but I think we have like 20 users in there. So um, it's quite a bit. And uh, the other thing that I would say is if you want to learn how to do BPMN, you can scan this QR code and it links to a video on YouTube, which I've sent to everybody that I want to learn how to get to learn how to do this. Um, our own employees are trained on this video. So I didn't go and re reinvent the wheel. I train on that particular video. And it'll, that's a great starting point. There's a couple other videos we send out, but this is, if you're gonna start, start there. So going forward, um, just to review, why, what do we do when we're trying to document a process, right? We wanna identify our swim lanes, right? Then we wanna identify the roles or actors in each swim lane. Then we identify gateways for decisions and tasks. And then we wanna determine if things are manual or automated. So why is this important, right? What does this do for us as a business? So I did um, I did load up a few ones that I wanted to share with you guys that, that might show why this is important in a real life perspective. Um, I'm gonna share a different screen again. I know this is a lot of bouncing around between screens today, but I wanted to make this, I wanted to make sure you guys had all the evidence all right, so doing sales per person compensation plans, right? You can have really complicated compensation plans. If you can't explain why people are on which compensation plan, right? If you have a really complicated one, like where you're selling 
you know, you have a commission for project management, if they're doing residential insurance, if they're doing commercial, if they're doing repairs, if they're doing roof rejuvenation, at which point they get paid on certain things. You want to make sure that you make it super abundantly clear what people are getting paid. Because if you make it clear what people are getting, if you make it, if you allow for it to be unclear what people get paid, you're going to have one of two options. Either they're going to have confusion, confusion leads to failure, or they're going to become frustrated and disillusioned. And if they become disillusioned with the business, right, there's a, there's a report that says up to, um, at least a third of the people, a third of employees are disengaged with the goals of the business and 18% are actively sabotaging the goals of the business. It's huge. So um, it's big. Now, another benefit to this is um, recruiting. What to do when a new employee gets onboarded. So just for perspective, right, we have a recruiting pipeline inside, um, inside HubSpot. So we make a recruiting pipeline, and I'm just going to dive in here for a second and show you guys like a live example. But we have recruiting pipelines. see can't remember if it's, if it's contacts or this I should just stop sharing my screen for one second while I'm diving through a customer account okay all right so Applicants. So we have stages and steps. We actually do the recruiting in here. The benefit to doing your recruiting and having your process clearly laid out with how people are, are getting onboarded and how you do your hiring is that you can create a very duplicatable hiring process to get great people. This is something that Allison's done in our business. And I feel so blessed to have the great employees that we have, but she documents the processes of the applications and hiring pipeline and it's essentially comes down to if you can get a talent acquisition funnel to match your customer acquisition funnel the balance of the business becomes a lot better and as long as you can acquire customers that feed the talent and the talent can constantly support the customers your business will grow and so i know this is a lot of bouncing around i've never tried to teach bpmn in under an hour um, I know that's super tough. I see some people are asking for the YouTube channel. Bettina, I'm going to spotlight you while I go get that. And uh, let me know if anybody has any questions that I can help with. Of course, folks, uh, again, if you have any questions, just either put it on the chat on the Q&A box. Uh, I know that Kevin is uh, looking for that video. I think that Adam's about to get it. Um, so we're just going to give him a few moments to grab the, the one from YouTube. Um, and if you guys have anything that would like to address to Adam, just please drop it on the Q&A uh, on the Q&A box below. Um, I know that's a little bit of information. Some of you are not appointed with BPMN chart just yet. There it is. There's the video for you folks. Um, if you guys have any trouble also using the link that I have shared before for the Lucid chart, just also let us know and we'll be able to help you. All right. So such a, such a, such a huge, huge topic. I know it's big. What did you guys, did you guys get value? Did this help? Let me know if this is something I should do again. If I should do a deeper dive into this, what would you guys like from this? Because these courses are largely influenced by you. We had a customer in our winning Wednesday ask about how to do a video testimonial with a customer. And they didn't know how to get a customer to talk on video. And I have an 11 question list that I used years ago. Um, to guide people through how to interview a customer so that you would end up with a video testimonial at the end, right? And I realized, huh, I went and dug up that document that I haven't touched in two years and looking at it, I was like, oh, I should teach a course on this specifically. So this is a big topic and it's so necessary 
to the growth in the three to $8 million break point and beyond. But you have to get good at documenting processes in this break point, or you will not pass it, or you will have instability in your business and you will have risk of failure built into your future. It is such an important topic. So that's why I'm really going to push and just want to know what, why are you not going to go and start documenting your processes immediately so that I can try and figure out how to help you? All right, going through the comments here. This is great. Easy. Clean. Okay, I'm glad it's clean and clear. It's great. Gonna have to refine computer skills. Well, Savano, there's people who can help you with that stuff. Okay, you guys got the QR code for the video. Okay, deeper dive, huge topic. Yep, you're right, absolutely. The list for testimonials, Silvano, I'm putting together the course on that. I got a few up in front, but we're gonna get done. I think a deeper dive is necessary. It's great for info now, but how do we know what shapes and how to use the flow chart either in that program or not? I wanna build one for onboarding an employee and this is helpful. Perfect, Ashley. Uh, would you do a live training and build one requesting a customer to do video? Build on one on requesting a customer to do. I love it. Okay. Also, can we send a video training to each of our employees and ask them to try and do it with a review? Yeah, they, they, that video training that you have there, the one that I sent the YouTube video is a really good training. Um, it is a lot of like what I did today. You'll feel like you'll watch it and you're like, oh, this is a lot of what Adam was talking about. It's you want to find somebody who's good at it. One of our customers, they found a guy, he was so good at doing it out of the gate that I actually bought him an $80 Udemy course. This kid's like 19 and I would hire this guy in a heartbeat. I'll never steal him away from a customer, but he uh, very, very good. And now he's like, their, he's the best HubSpot admin of all my customers. So of all my customers with all their complex builds and two and three and four and five and 600 workflows, the best HubSpot admin is a 19 year old making like $20 an hour, but he's really good at BPM ends. And so then he BPM ends and then he builds workflows. And now he don't, they don't even send us tickets to build workflows anymore. We work on higher level shit with this customer because a lot of the basic stuff he's got getting, getting done for like a 19 or $20 an hour young person. And, uh, and it all started because when I was there, I taught him, I, ta I bought, I bought the employee out of my own pocket, a Udemy course, um, to, it was like 89 bucks and it was just a deeper dive into BPM because he liked it. And that's the thing. Finding the right people to do this job is important, right? There's people who like this kind of stuff. You just have to find them. Typically, they pay to play like role-playing video games and uh, they usually did kind of sports activities that required a lot of technical skill, like skateboarding, shooting, like stuff where like the details really matter. Um do you okay? What was that? Okay. Also, can we uh do you ever turn this into videos of the same mapped process? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the next step of all this is to the next step to process creation is you then document it by using something called scribe. So then you go do the action, right? And you record it with this app called Scribe, and that allows you to actually create these these workflows and you would use vidyard all right and you can record the actual steps of a process in vidyard so if i go and go here so then you would also have it in here demonstrating how to do that process here so then you have the whole company process map then you break down individual tasks into scribes. And then also while you're recording the scribe, also record a vidyard explaining how to do it. So that like, this is part one of training for a brand new sales rep. And it's a nine video playlist of how to do all the individual steps. That's why we, that's why in our build that we did of this platform build for people, that's why we did it. Um, we created all this stuff that you would have to do we kind of did it all for you with that, that mission control, right? So with this, it's like we did it all. So we made the platform build. 
we have it all BPMN'd out, and then we also have all the critical tasks documented so that every step is there so that you as a person don't have, like you as a leader don't have to do it. It was actually a massive task um, to make it. Because when we did it, we were like, well, we're going to have to make it easy for people to learn this thing if I'm not going to have to fly around and teach everybody. So then we had this thing called operations and then the master plan. And then we had to define every single task that needed to be done. This is just the me mode. If I get, we had to define every single task that everybody had to do. So if we look at it on timeline, to get this thing to launch, we had to build all of these steps. So it was a massive amount of work. Oh, crap. We had to build all these things so that everything was in there for you guys in the form of scribes and vidyards so that you could do all these steps. So yes, uh, you would absolutely follow that up with a video, a vidyard recording and something called scribe that allows people to follow along with the steps so they could have this and that. And if you use mission control, which again, it's free. You don't even have to pay for mission control. You can, you can, I can get you guys mission control and you can have it. Now the instructions are built for HubSpot, but you could also, you can also add your own. You can add your own cards in here and you can make stuff for whatever CRM you're in. So you don't have to use HubSpot to use mission control. It just makes it so you can have it pop out. The nice thing about it with, with, with what we did is we made it so that you could also click on tasks and it would pull it up here and show you how to use tasks or um if you're like just so you could use and say how do i book a meeting and it'll pull it up automatically because it it mission control can read the word meetings and then put this little lightning bolt there and then make it so you can pull this up and have it right there beside you while you're working on it but absolutely very very cool adam can you can you go over the concept of scribe in terms of uh, doc, uh documenting process and do you guys if you want the the link uh, for Scribe, just be, please uh, comment on the chat and Andy will drop a link for Scribe for you folks. But if Adam, can you answer that question for, for Silvano, just the concept of Scribe? Yeah, so Scribe essentially allows you to, you can click new and click, click uh, create a step-by-step -step guide. So now it's going to record. And so I can say new tab and I can be like, okay, so now it's going to record. And it's like, how to document a, um, a process with BPMN 2.0. So I search and then I say, click on this and then click on this and I'll stop it. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna pop up this and it's gonna say, okay, using Google to find a B, so it kind of makes this. It says navigate to google.com, type how to document this it says click here and it says click get demo and you can add stuff like a header that says um i would use lucid chart instead right and stuff like that so then you can share this right into mission control so then you can actually add this as a card inside there or you could share it in a google doc or whatever you guys want to do um and you can actually see like who like who looks at these things, you can collaborate on them, you can make public comments, team comments, but you use Scribe to ultimately just click through and do the process once, document it, and then other people can follow along. And now it's there for everybody to use. And so there's no confusion as to how it works. And you click done editing, and now, now you're done. Now this one here, this one's kind of dumb, so obviously I want to delete this. I've never deleted one. Oh, oh yeah. I think I should just go back into Scribe. Delete. But yeah, that's that's how you do it. Here, I can earn a credit. Here, if you want to sign up for it, links in the chat, folks. If you sign up, I get thirty bucks. Helps me buy baby diapers. I think they also have a free option. Yeah, they do have a free option. 
Oh yeah, because you can X. Yeah. So yeah, they even have a free. They even have a free option. We have a we we use the pro plan, but we wanted to make something that was really awesome for you guys. So because again, we have to document all the processes inside platform um, to make it easy for you guys. So hope that hope that helps. We are five minutes over. Um, I hope you guys have a great. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, if this was a good course, please tell people about them. I would love more people to come. I would love to have a great impact. So thank you guys for being here. Let me know, of course, let uh, Bettina and Andy know what type of co course content you guys would like to see, what you guys are learning. Um, we're trying to ramp up to two a day. So we're going to do two a day and three on Wednesdays with Winning Wednesday. And if you guys have challenges, struggles in your business, make sure you come to Winning Wednesday. I will let Bettina do her usual closeout because she's much more planned ahead than I am. And I will get out of here. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, Adam. Guys, uh, thank you so much for participating. I hope that was helpful. Uh, next week, we won't be having any courses on Friday. We will have two on Monday and two on Wednesday. We will have uh, a special time for our winning Wednesday. So if you guys came uh, this Wednesday, you know that I told you guys to be more purposeful this week to come in with your, winning, your wins or any challenges that you have for Adam. So just please click on the link uh, that I just sent it if you guys want to register for the upcoming courses that we're going to have. Uh, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this and y'all have a great weekend.